Is React on the Nike Epic React better than Boost on the Ultra Boost? Let's find out. What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm comparing the Nike Epic React to the Adidas Ultra Boost 4.0. Thanks so much for tuning in today guys. Make sure to give me a follow on Instagram and on Twitter at RealSethFowler if you haven't yet. Also make sure to head on over to Twitch and give me a follow there at Seth Fowler. But with all that out of the way, let's get into it. So just a few weeks ago, Nike released their first running sneaker with their Boost competitor, Nike React. This shoe is called the Nike Epic React and it's a predecessor to the Nike Lunar Epic. Visually, this shoe is very similar to the Lunar Epic, but this time around, instead of using any lunar or any other kind of foam in the midsole, the entire midsole and outsole tooling is made up of React cushioning. This isn't the first time Nike's used React cushioning on a sneaker. They've also used it on some basketball sneakers in 2017. Those sneakers are the Jordan Superfly 2017 and the Hyperdunk React 2017. These are both budget but excellent basketball sneakers and the difference between these and the new Nike Epic React is that these actually have encased React cushioning. These don't feel bad by any stretch of the imagination but you really don't get a good feel for what React is until you try the Nike Epic React. And then moving over to the Adidas side of things, we've got the Adidas Ultra Boost 4.0. Just like with Nike, the Ultra Boost isn't the first shoe to use their Boost cushioning, but it is by far the most popular. I'm sure if you guys are watching this video, you already have a really good idea of what the Ultra Boost is and how Boost cushioning feels. Personally, it's been my favorite cushion setup for the last couple years, and that's just because of how incredibly comfortable it is. But as you can tell by the title of this video, this is a versus video, so let's find out which shoe is better, the Nike Epic React or the Adidas Ultra Boost 4.0. Starting off with one of the most noticeable differences between these two shoes, the price. The Nike Epic React starts at $150, whereas the Adidas Ultra Boost starts at $180. So the Ultra Boost already starts things out with a $30 premium over the Nike Epic React. So right off the bat, for more budget conscious people, the Nike Epic React may already be a better way to go. Obviously, aesthetically, these are both very similar shoes. I've heard people saying that the Nike Epic React is sort of a knockoff of the Adidas Ultra Boost. That's definitely not the case. There have been shoes that have looked like the Nike Epic React since the 90s. For example, the Nike Air Presto, which honestly Honestly, the Ultra Boost looks a lot like. I actually got that comparison from Hess Kick's video. You should definitely check him out if you haven't yet. With that being said, you definitely can't make the argument that this is a knockoff of this shoe aesthetically. From what I've heard from people very close to Nike, React was made specifically to be a competitor for Boost. So for that reason, cushioning wise, the shoes do feel pretty similar. They're both premium running shoes. They both have knit uppers. They're both actually really nice looking as well. So let's dive more into the details of what separates these two shoes. Starting off with the upper of the sneakers, the Nike Epic React utilizes fly knit, whereas the Adidas Ultra Boost 4.0 utilizes Prime Knit. I'm sure most of you are familiar with both, and honestly, these two knit uppers don't really feel that much different than their predecessors. The Fly Knit on the Nike Epic React still feels like Fly Knit. The Prime Knit on the Adidas Ultra Boost 4.0 still feels like regular Prime Knit. It's not anything too different. When comparing the two though, there is definitely a difference between the knit upper on the Prime Knit and the knit upper on the Fly Knit. Prime Knit is definitely a softer, more stretchy version of knit. It definitely feels like a sock on your foot. It has sort of like a wool or a sweater quality to it, which I actually really like. Even though it has a a lot of ventilation holes. It's definitely a lot warmer than the Flyknit. Not that it's a warm shoe overall, but it's definitely something you notice. Whereas the Flyknit, although flexible, is definitely a lot stiffer. It's definitely noticeably stiffer, especially when you're wearing it on your foot. One thing I will say though that I actually like about the stiffness of the shoe is that it actually offers a lot more support than Primeknit does, especially Primeknit without a cage. That's another big difference between these two shoes. The Ultra Boost has a midfoot cage, whereas the Nike Epic React does not. And I would say for me personally, when wearing the Ultra Boost, honestly, I don't usually lace up this shoe because it does have such a sock-like fit. If you're using the shoe for running or any kind of athletics, I would definitely say to lace up and tighten up the shoe because the midfoot cage does actually offer some pretty nice support in the midfoot. Not so much around the toes of your feet, which is probably okay because when you're running, you're not going to need too much lateral support but it's something that I noticed. My toe kind of pops out the side whenever I'm making like really tight left turns, which doesn't seem like too big of a deal and it's not something I do a lot, but it's genuinely something that I noticed. Whereas on the Nike Epic React, it doesn't have a cage, but it really doesn't feel like it needs one. And the stiffer fly knit definitely makes you feel more supported, which I really liked. I will say though that both shoes do feel relatively narrow, but the Nike Epic React definitely feels more narrow because of the stiffness of the material. The last thing I wanted to cover about the upper is the ankle collar. On the Nike Epic React, you have this really thin, somewhat raw edge around the ankle. That's something that, at least for me, makes me definitely need to wear a sock whenever I'm wearing this shoe. I found if I'm going to the corner store and just don't throw on a pair of socks, sometimes this ankle collar area can chafe a little bit, which honestly is kind of annoying. When you're wearing a sock though, it's really no problem at all. In addition to that, there really is no padding around the heel area whatsoever, but the nice thing is that it really does feel like a true one-to-one -one fit, so you don't really feel like you need it, but in all honesty, I kind of would have liked it if there was a bit more cushioning around the heel, just so for whatever reason, I hit the back of my shoe kind of hard, it doesn't feel like my foot is slamming into the 
the heel counter. Usually not a problem at all, but just something that I would have liked. Whereas on the Ultra Boost, you have this really plush, soft ankle collar area that's actually pretty wide. From about this section of the shoe all the way to the heel of the sneaker, the entire ankle area is really heavily padded. It also has this sort of plush pillow pull tab thing, which feels really great against your ankle, even when you're not wearing socks. It's just a really comfortable ankle and heel area. The one downside to that is that it doesn't feel like you have as much lockdown, even when you tighten up the shoe as you do with the Nike Epic React, but honestly, for lifestyle wear, I definitely prefer this ankle section. Moving on to the main difference between these two shoes, the midsole cushion. Right off the bat, I've got to say that both shoes are incredibly comfortable, and you really can't go wrong with either when it comes to midsole cushioning. However, there are some minor differences that may influence your decision when deciding between these two shoes. Starting off with the Ultra Boost that we've all known and loved for years, the Boost cushioning has this very signature styrofoam look to it, and the reason for that aesthetic is that how they actually make the Boost cushioning is they take these little Boost pellets and heat them up until they expand into a mold and create this look. So each one of these little segments is actually a heated up and expanded boost pellet. As for comfort, up until now I'd say boost cushioning has been pretty much unmatched. It's incredibly soft, it's incredibly comfortable, and provides a huge amount of impact protection. For lifestyle wear I'd say you just can't get any better than boost. On the Nike side of things, React, although it feels similar to boost, is actually produced a very different way. Rather than using pellets that actually expand into a mold, Nike actually pours the foam into a mold itself so they can actually give it any shape that they want. So in theory Nike could actually change the design of the React cushioning and you just wouldn't really know it was React unless they called it out. Which is fine, but it's definitely a great branding win for Adidas that they have this boost cushioning that looks so unique and so different. No one's really sure yet if this is going to be the standard sort of pattern for Nike React to let people know what it is, or if this is just a pattern specific to this shoe. I'm not a huge fan of it. I don't dislike it. I definitely see that they're going for some sort of boost inspiration. I'm not going to lie about that. I mean, it definitely doesn't look exactly like boost at all, but it's got some sort of like boost pellety vibes to it. As for comfort, this is by far my favorite Nike foam cushion that they've ever created. It's incredibly soft to the touch, which I really like. One big difference between the construction on the Nike Epic React and the Adidas Ultra Boost is that on the Adidas Ultra Boost, your foot is actually riding on purely boost. Of course, there's an insole and this really thin piece of like almost fabric, but essentially your foot is right on top of the boost. Whereas on the Nike Epic React, there's actually this stiff sort of plasticky strobo board between your foot and the React cushioning. It definitely gives your foot a little bit more stability on the React cushioning and helps the ride not feel as mushy as boost can feel. One thing I will say though is that I'm kind of disappointed that it's there and it's mainly there for performance purposes which I'll get to in a second but if you're wearing the shoe for lifestyle although it's comfortable it's just not as soft and not as like cushy as the boost is. To be fair, the difference really isn't that noticeable, so I'm wondering if they didn't have the strobo board and your foot was just right on the React, the React might feel even softer than boost, but as of right now with that strobo board, it's just not as soft. However, although the boost does feel slightly better, especially for lifestyle wear, I would say I would pick the Nike Epic React for performance anytime. And the reason for that is the sort of cushy, cloud-like, almost mushy feel of the Ultra Boost is kind of its downfall when it comes to running. The combination of the strobo board and the React foam cushioning really helps this shoe have this really great sort of bouncy feel when you're running. The impact protection is excellent. You really do get this nice subtle sort of bounce back feel and the midsole cushioning never feels mushy. What's interesting about this shoe is that when you're wearing it casually it does have a very boosty sort of feel but when you're running in it it almost feels like it stiffens up a little bit which I love. I think that's amazing. It just gives you that extra support, that extra bounce. I, I just love it for running. It's great. Keep in mind I'm not really a runner by any stretch of the imagination but for running on the treadmill or running around the city this has been excellent. Moving on to another difference between the two shoes, the outsole. The Adidas Ultra Boost utilizes a webbed continental rubber outsole, whereas the Nike Epic React has a little bit of translucent rubber around the toe and on the heel of the shoe, but a majority of the outsole is just pure React on the ground. Right off the bat, I think there's a clear winner when it comes to durability. The continental rubber, although it is thin and although it doesn't last forever, definitely will outlast the Nike Epic React's outsole. I haven't been wearing the Nike Epic React for too long, but you can already sort of see where the shoe is wearing down, especially on the React that kind of bums me out a little bit. I was really surprised that Nike did the outsole this way and didn't give it sort of a full rubber outsole like Adidas did. Keep in mind, like I said before, this outsole isn't incredible. It wears down pretty fast and the boost will eventually crack, but I mean honestly I just don't know if this outsole is going to last me that long. To be fair, there is actually a lot of React cushioning so it can't eat all the way to the bottom of your foot, but I mean it's not going to be as fresh and new for as long as the Ultra Boost is. Aesthetically, I think both shoes look great. I think the Nike Epic React has more of a performance vibe to it, and I think the Ultra Boost still has a performance vibe, but it's so popular as a lifestyle shoe, most people would attribute this to being just a lifestyle shoe. Personally, I also think the lines and the overall silhouette of the shoe is just a little bit more attractive, so aesthetically I'd have to go Ultra Boost every time. Overall, I think both shoes are excellent. I think Nike knocked it out of the park with React's cushioning, and I'm really excited to see what they do with this cushioning in the future. We already 
already know that Adidas has a hit on their hand with Boost. It's an excellent cushion. It's got that sort of unique look to it. It feels great. I mean, it's a winner. So breaking these two shoes down, I'd say the Nike Epic React is definitely the better performance shoe. It's a lot lighter than the Ultra Boost. I mean, significantly lighter than the Ultra Boost. The cushion setup is excellent for running. It's got a really supportive upper and the price is $30 cheaper than the Ultra Boost. So if you're budget conscious, this might be the way to go. Personally, for me, I choose the Ultra Boost for lifestyle because I think it looks better. I think the midsole cushioning is a little bit better when it comes to more daily just walking around for more of that pillowy sort of cushiony feel. And as of right now, there's just a lot more colorways and a lot more options when it comes to the Ultra Boost style wise. Like I said, they're both great shoes. You really can't go wrong with either. Just know sort of what your use case is gonna be when wearing the shoes and use that to help you decide on which shoe you prefer. That pretty much wraps up the video today, guys. Make sure to leave a comment in the comment section down below letting me know what you think of the Nike Epic React and the Adidas Ultra Boost and which one you like better. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to me, Seth Fowler, if you want to see more content just like this. And follow me in all other forms of social media. The links will be in the description below.